thought of the phrase buttload? And like, what does that mean? Uh, great question. I'm assuming the phrase buttload came from <laughs> Arnold Buttload in the 1930s. And he actually brought over a lot of the, cur the current, um, like the, the kind of paper that we use. And it was a buttload. It was I'm Professor saying, Buttload. Like, he knew, he came over on it was like, oh, a boat like with a, a bunch of paper. Load. And that's kind Are of the paper we know today. Yeah, are my frozen? <laughs> no, but could or do you, you have questions? Can you hear do me? Do you have questions about? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Do you have a do you have any questions about Arthur Butthold? Buttful? Buttload? No, I'm just saying it's stupid because if you were like wanting to imply that something's a lot, you'd be like, oh, a truckload, or like a no something well, that has a lot. How, like what is how, it, how, a buttload? Like that butts aren't like <laughs> not like they're not mass like and quantity. massive. Well, like, I think because everything is all about perspectives, it's like, oh, like you can fit a, you, I personally, for me, I have, I have a lot on my plate right now. There's a lot in my butt. There's a, I have got a lot in my butt right now. The load in my butt is but massive. When you're right saying now. butt load, that implies that everyone would be having a lot in their butt right now, which I don't think we can assume like that. It's important to break down language. I think language is um, so nuanced. And when you Why break are you down talking language. talking like you're on the call map? Um, I don't know. I feel I'm seeing I'm, I'm feeling a lot of clarity on my end right now. Yes. I don't know if I'm it's feeling a Zoom of or, or truly head. like, I don't know if it's a Zoom or you, like you're talking completely differently. People change. People. Is, is there a way you could evolve. go back to, is there a way you could go back to the way you spoke in the other podcasts? <laughs> Our previous podcast. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. You're okay. freaking me out. Oh, Okay. Well, yeah, we can. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. I just want to get ahead of it. I want to get a, I want to get ahead of the the buttload of allegations that are going to come our way. We are remote again this week. I apologize for that. I know last week was probably a like I was a struggle for all involved. I don't think there was one person in my personal life that wasn't affected by the struggle of our Zoom recording last week. We've adapted. We've overcome. We've changed. We evolved rattle them off but now we are using we're doing a new format and i think this is going to be better i'm excited about this i feel better i don't think it was that bad last week i think i had a lot of technical because i i was on speakerphone with brooke i explained this last week i was on a speakerphone so i was hearing you and me twice mm -hmm. so for me personally like it was hard to get got stuff it. out got it yeah and i'm excited for where we've ended up this week I'm at home in Texas at my parents' house um, because my dog selfishly decided that my family dog decided that now he's gonna he's gonna move on he's gonna move <laughs> forward with passing passing on. It's okay. Sorry, Tom. did you just laugh? No, no okay. the, uh, you're being funny, but I'm so sorry. That is ne like truly the worst thing in the world. Oh, it's Losing so. Yesterday, that. I texted you, but yesterday I just like my parents left, and then my dog was just like wobbling around and he's just like so old i like sat on the ground and like cried with him and it was just crazy and then i just like and then he's just like to like com kind of completely fine he's just old now and now i'm like damn i was kind of like i kind of like cried too early <laughs> so now i'm like embarrassed so but he has some time left i think he does so full transparency on friday i went to a wedding my parents were coming to the wedding and it was in austin and my just my mom came and um, she was like, oh, your dad, your dad's going to stay home. Like, well, first of all, I was taking a bath and I don't, I don't take baths often. So when my mom started You're taking calling a bath me, at the wedding before the wedding. So this was like, I got in on Friday morning. I was taking a bath. Okay. Splish splash. And my mom's calling me. It's Epsom salt bath. You know, I was real, I was really like yeah. in the zone. I'm like, okay, 
lot of travel. I'm going to take this back. My mom calls me five times. So I text her, obviously, what do you, what do you say to your mom when she calls you five times? You know, get a hit. And then obviously, of course, my dog, like it was tragic. Mm. She's like, he is like fully paralyzed, like can't move. And he like, we don't know what we're going to do. Dad's going to stay home. I'm going to come to the wedding. I was like, oh my God, I got to like go ordain my friend's wedding. And this is also like show exactly what happened the last time my family dog died, except I thought your what last killed. one got hit by a bus. Yes. I was, yeah. So it's actually not the same at all in any way, but it was kind of the same sort of like vague. We had some somewhere to be and it was going to, so like the last time mm-hmm. this happened, when my, when my family dog died, I was like starting on varsity soccer for the first time ever. And it was like soft, freshman or sophomore year of high school. And then my cousin texts me, I heard your dog got hit by an 18 wheeler as I'm putting in my shin guards in the bathroom before I went out to play. And I was like, surely this was Logan. Oh, it was Logan, cousin Logan. And I was like, huh? And I like locked my phone. I put it away and I go out in the field and my mom comes to the game, no makeup. And I was like, oh my God. She's always, you know, right. Full glam. Decked out. And decked out to the nines. And I was like, oh, there must be some truth to that. Obviously I could not perform. And I got moved back down to junior varsity. Oh, no. Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, crap. I got to shake this before I go ordain my friend's wedding because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be out of the game a little bit. I'm going to get moved back down to, the, to JV. But I was like, crap, it's their wedding. So whatever. And then my dog ended up like, also, he was at the vet. They gave him, he wasn't pooping. <laughs> okay, what time stand for poop this week? <laughs> Um, I can't tell him. I, I don't have the it was early. timer, but probably less than five. Less than five. We've six. Six. Hey, that's I love first. I think the voice of Izzy before. from beyond. It's the hard. I think the, the tricky thing about Zoom is I can't like we talk at the same time more because I don't know if you can hear me speaking. I can't. Can you? But you're just choosing to talk. The second I start speaking, one of us starts speaking at the same time. Does that make Is sense? Is there a delay? I don't know. Sorry. Let, I'll just, I'm going to pause longer when I talk. But anyways. Okay, we'll do, we'll do long pauses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what he went in for. And then they were like, we're going to give him this shot that's going to make him poop immediately like he's paralyzed. Just like couldn't move his whole body, but he's like crying, freaky. And then he like made a full recovery. I think that whatever, it was just like a temporary side effect of the shot. But... I am home at my parents' house because of his age. And I don't know when the next time I'll be able to see him is, if ever. Not to start this out on this note, I think it'll be, I think we'll have fun today because there's only up or down from here, whatever one's the easiest and more fun, <laughs> whatever direction is. It's weird. Like all of my friends have really old family dogs, myself included. And like half of them at this point, I would say, have, have left us. Yeah. A small bit are, are about to leave. And then the other, there's a few that are still kicking it. So. Yep. It's so weird. It, it always be in my prayers. Like, yeah. It's, it's like not me having an old dog. I'm not supposed to have an old dog, old lumpy dog. I'm not, supposed, that's not, he's not old. It's because the last time I was home, he was like a, like still acting like a puppy. And then I it guess just, the, like, it actually makes sense. Cause I got our, old family dog when we were in high school like when i was like junior or senior in high school so i bet subconsciously our parents were like oh we have a child leaving we better get another one and that's why everybody our age is currently dealing with the the old dog epidemic it is an old dog epidemic and like, yeah it's not looking like saki is going to beat bobby at this point but we don't know how old bobby really was now Due i'm fr- really fraudulent claims and such no, I'm really on like the side of Guinness World Record book being like, yeah, strip that title because that's not that did not happen. That right. shouldn't be Saki's. That should be my dog Saki's, who is like, com- like completely blind as well as deaf. And like, I'm like, oh my god, so yeah. But he's only he's 14. Yeah, I feel like he, yes, he's old, but I feel like 16 is when you're like, wow, wow, they're still kicking it, huh? I mean, I don't know. Now I'm like. Like looking at him, I'm like, he's not, he's not unhappy. I mean, I can't tell if he's unhappy, but he doesn't seem like he's still kind of a dick and he's always been a dick. Really? You know, he, yeah. He's kind of like, 
he's like she's when we go in the kitchen still kind of at some capacity and like it like makes noise for food like begs still and like um i don't know he's just he kind of does his own thing he doesn't he's never like cuddled or anything so it's not like i'm like oh now he can no longer get on the couch he kind of doesn't he wants to be in the same room as you but not mm-hmm on you like like max wants to be like on you touching you while you're in the room and anyone he's more of a frankie he's more of a frankie he keeps his distance he's a little yeah. he's a little aloof by design okay. yeah yeah maybe he's not a dick maybe he's just an introvert that's true i was quick to judge no worries but anywho that's why we're remote um we obviously just hit a full hour of technical difficulties Yes. After I said, I feel like this is going to be smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. But it feels like now we've got no delay, I feel like, because we're not. No. And it's one of those things like when you leave your backpack on the train and then you get it back. That's how I feel right now. I feel like we've just gotten the backpack back. So what could nothing could get worse. No. I mean, that was tough. You're right. It's just put things in perspective completely. Hey, guys, we're going to take a quick break to thank one of today's sponsors, Fume. Have you ever tried to break a bad habit and felt like you're climbing Everest in flip-flops? Yeah, we've been there too. But here's a breath of fresh air. Fume. It's not about giving up. It's about switching up. I love that attitude. Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Okay? Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural, okay? And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors like crisp mint and grapefruit, okay? You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. I need stuff to do with my fingers all the time. Yeah. We started with the fidget spinners. We had the sensory slugs. Now fume. I was pretty surprised by the taste, too. It's more flavorful. You know, I was thinking it also feels fresh. Plus, fume just released a magnetic stand for your fume. So there's no more losing it around the house, okay? It's built with fidgeting in mind. You can spin your fume around on it. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash B and C and getting the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use code B and C to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Sometimes you Uh need to leave your backpack on the train. Sometimes you need to leave your backpack on the train and take the boat to work. Yep. Amen, brother. That 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 phrase didn't catch on as much as I thought it was going to online over the the past week. I really thought that that was going to be a like which one next, take the boat to work. Oh, I didn't. I didn't have high hopes for that one. Oh, okay. I really was like, oh, like I couldn't stop saying it after the first time. Take the boat to work. Oh, we talked about we talked about this for ten minutes. <laughs> no, week. I know we talked about that, but I don't remember you like making a saying of it. It was just a conversation. Oh no, it's a saying. It's like. It's like the pe- putting in a lot of effort to get to work when it's like not a high return for me. Like, I don't want to work hard to get to somewhere to work. You know, like it mm-hmm. should be, you know, working from home makes so much sense because like I, I hate work, you know, like I'm, I don't, I'm not a hard worker. So like, mm-hmm. and I certainly don't want to go to work, but when you throw in a, a, the whole thing was like a boat seems glorious, but if your a boat is your commute to work, no. Okay, um, either I had completely missed the message or forget the conversation. Okay. But I, we I do about, remember talking about it, the boat to work. Because people ferry from like Brooklyn and yeah, yeah. Manhattan. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I guess I just, well, I'm not, I wasn't thinking about the implications. I know. I just think, you know, because it, it sounds cool in practice. Like, yeah, I, my, I take a boat every day. You to thought work, that was like, going to be the next I have purse? Not I have purse, but just kind of like a new outlook. Like maybe I was the maybe I was like Jay Shetty, you know, with that, like taking the boat to work. Oh, but like my God, a fun I had no idea. Yeah. I it's no em- idea. it's like it's embarrassing to say that I really <laughs> thought that I did something and no one else remembers it. So No, I don't remember shit, Connor. It's actually that's okay. horrifying. Oh, you and me both. That's actually no. my new nightmare. Izzy was in it, actually. 
you know how my usual stress dream is like I'm driving and the brakes don't work. But this time it was I went on a trip and I was like in London and Italy. And then all of a sudden I was on the plane in, in Korea. And I was going Korea to LAX and I was next to Itzy and I was like, wait, like, why am I not remembering any of the Korea trip? And she was showing me pictures of <laughs> of me and her in Korea on her phone. And she was like, we did this, we did this, we did this. And I was like, holy shit. Like the last thing I remember was us in Italy. So like, I literally like, like I didn't have I, a huge chunk of my memory was missing. That's scary. Of us in Korea. So that's my new stress dream, which is sweet. Oh no. You were really taking the boat to work when you were in your in Korea. <laughs> you could say that, that again. Must, that must have been really hard. <laughs> that's actually no, no, that's genuinely horrible and scary. Yeah. It's so weird. My my dad's downstairs. Like ever since, and this is like you talked about a flight. Ever since I talked, I talked about like being scared on planes. A lot of people have been like, I just got that too. And now it seems like I know I'm like hyper aware of it. Now it seems like every freaking thing on the news is like Boeing 787. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about the guy? There was a, I'm scared to even say it. I don't know if we talked about it. I'm flying yet. tomorrow. No, 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 no. It's fine. I'm all, it, it's fine. I'm also flying potentially tomorrow. But there was a whistleblower. I mean, mark my words, there's going to be about 18 different Boeing documentaries on every single streaming platform by the end of the year. A lot of people are going to a lot of people are going to be mad. A lot of people are going to die. Are there any are we always on a Boeing? No, sometimes we're on an Airbus like 330s and Airbus. That's the plane you want to take. I think there's a lot of regulatory practices. Let me you can, tell you, you what I'm taking tomorrow. You can look up and see like what kind of plane it is. Trip, yeah. You know, 737. Oh, Airbus. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you right now. I actually how how do you do? Such? I think when you. When you click on your boarding pass, it should say flight number and then type of aircraft. Boarding pass. Maybe it's on there. If not, I it would got, be. I wouldn't say it's on my boarding. Oh, where's my plane? It should tell you type of plane, I think. Hey, I'll let you know when I get there. Yeah, man, please. How was the ordaining? Yeah. Um, wait, when did I, when did we talk last? I think last time we talked, if I could start back then, I would love to, because I had a couple things happen on the rest of my New York trip that I, I want to touch on. Oh yeah. Cause we recorded early la last week. I'll just talk while you find the, your aircraft type. No, it's, I'm not going to be able to find it. I don't think. Well, it's either, I think it's either a Boeing or an Airbus <laughs> and the Airbuses I think are like, we, they run, they run a tight ship. Right. Um, okay. Well, let's pray I'm on an Airbus. <laughs> I'm sure you are. I think that they're kind of swapping out the planes right now because of how much commotion is happening in the Boeing space. I'm on flight B6. Do you think it's B for Boeing? I think that's your terminal, right? Or your gate? No. It's I'm a B6? C. Oh, maybe no, B6 <laughs> is like a G6? B6 2010 is my flight number. Oh, that's your flight number. Don't tell me your flight number. I'll be, I'll be there by the time this comes out. Oh, yeah. B6. Your flight number is not your aircraft type, though. Right. What are you, what are you flying? I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe it is. Well, you know what? I'm going to look this up. Let's move I, on. I, 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 really? No, no, no it's going to bug me. What? B6. 2010. Okay. I mean, I'm praying it's an Airbus. 36. What time of or, plane? Or a, Bo a Boeing 6. Boeing. I keep thinking of Boeing Yang. No, wait. What what airline are you flying? JetBlue. JetBlue. It's a it's an Airbus. You're having yeah. an Airbus. Yes. That's so exciting! Oh my god, oh, I'll send so you pictures. Excited. I'll send you yeah, pictures. Please. Oh, I love JetBlue. JetBlue, yeah. like really That's stepping up. My favorite up. airline. Yeah, I think so too. I've I think so Mint. too. I've never flown Mint. I flew Mint once. I'll never, ever forget it. Good or bad? Awesome. Like oh, beyond wow. belief. I think to go back to the non mint seats coach. <gasps> truly did your, like you just turn I would on. Sorry. I would recommend what'd you say? Did your AC just turn on? No. Did it? Like it sounds like there's there's a large it sounds like there's an Airbus <laughs> B six in your apartment right now. I don't know. My AC's not on. 
It could have been me, I guess. Um, what happened on Mint? What happened on your Mint flight? It was All just I- ex- like oh, beyond boy. exceptional. It's just like truly being able to lie down flat makes the world of yeah. difference. Because I fall asleep on planes, but I'm also waking up every six seconds due to X, Y, Z, neck pain, back pain, yeah. turbulence, this, that. You don't have any of that when you're lying flat. You could fully sleep from the second you recline to the second the plane lands. Uninterrupted. Yeah. I, I slept in mint better than I've ever slept in my own bed. Oh, yeah. And I wake okay. up and there's a meal in front of me. I, there's, oh, yeah. my God. You're giving me. Did you hear something? Series. No. Okay, I didn't know there might have been an earthquake or something. That gives me FBCs. No, the, the 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 that is that's how that's how life is meant to be lived. Is horizontal with with a plate of food already there when you wake up. Wait, oh, why don't I slightly lift, slightly lift my body and turn on a movie and out, eat my out of and this eat my hot meal? I would recommend never doing a lie down experience if you ever again have to go back to coach because it's like. Yeah. Knowing I would rather have never have loved than to have lost what I've lost. I I've only done that, I think like twice. And it is it's you're right, it's better than your bed. I don't know for mm-hmm. what reason that's better. I guess because there's someone serving you food. And when you open up that little when you open up that little um kit and there's like socks, I'm putting on these socks. I already have socks on, I'm putting on these new socks. They're Can't thin. Stick a face mask. I'm doing all of it. I don't even, you know, some people are like, oh, cool. I'm like, I'm I'm using every part of this I've, kit. I'm milking them for every every penny I spent. I'm shaving in the bathroom in the plane. I'm I'm brushing my teeth. Oh, I have those little socks on. One thing that freaks me out that I really just can't get on board with is people that put those socks on and because they have grip on their grippy socks mm-hmm. as well. And I think like you can. But, you know, and then I think the idea is that you throw them away. Hey, guys, we're going to take a quick break and thank a sponsor of today's episode, Skims. I want to tell you guys about my latest obsession, Skims underwear. It's the Mm -hmm. Fits Everybody collection, and it's so stretchy and soft, and I literally forget that I'm wearing any. There's truly nothing better than feeling good in your basics, and underwear is no exception. I've been wearing Skims for months now, and the Fits Everybody collection is truly life-changing. It's so stretchy and soft, it just kind of melts onto your body and you forget that you're wearing it. I love it and think everyone should experience this level of comfort. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for everybody. My personal favorites are the triangle bralette and the boy short. These are good quality stable pieces that hold up well, look good, and feel good. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body. The buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape, meaning you get a perfect fit every time. It's available in sizes extra, extra small to 4X. Believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, you get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know we sent you, please. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. Like after the flight, because you can walk, or you don't have to have your shoes on. But I see people go in the bathroom with them on. Mm. Um, and there's still socks, I think. I don't feel good about that. Once they're out of the space of like their home, they're putting on these socks on a plane, which are made out of sock, standard sock material. And then they're going into like a restroom that I may have missed in, you know? I don't feel good about it. Yeah. And you don't want to, you don't want peace sock. And if you're going to miss in any bathroom, it's going to be that one. It's easy. It's easy to. I, I'll say it. I also have an OCD. It's thing. hard not to. It's it's hard not to. And that's one where I don't sit to pee. I do stand to pee in the airplane bathroom. But um, crap. I lost it. Oh, I, my OCD thing is when I was a child, like it freaked me out to push the button when they go. It sucks. It sucks. The, the, the yeah. contents of the toilet just wherever they go i don't know and i have to close my both my ears as soon as i push the button until it goes away i've been i've done that for my entire life yes same thing with hair air hair air hand dryers yeah i I can understand that they are really strong yeah they'll suck that boat butt load right out of you they'll suck it out and through um what's the protocol on taking your shoes off on the plane but you have socks on that's fine right yeah. Oh my okay. god. Yeah. 
I wanted to make sure because like I'm I've always been to take my shoes off when I have socks on the plane kind of person. Yeah. And then I'll put my shoes on if I have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. But I've seen on TikTok on TikTok some people like shitting on people for taking off their shoes, period. Even when they're socks. I think if you're the kind of person, obviously like if you medically have stank foot, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, oh, this is gonna be bad. I think if if it if it doesn't hurt anybody else, take your shoes off. If it is, you know, affecting other people, you got you gotta leave your shoes on. You know, my feet don't smell. That's nice. That's great. No matter what I do, that's, that's like so, the that's one a great like quality, real, really pretty quality I have. That's very ladylike. The one lady like dainty petite quality I have is that my very feet lady never smell. Like. Yeah, that's pretty. Um, I don't really either. I have had a situation that's not where true. someone has <laughs> no. When I my shoes will smell, but yeah. my feet do not smell unless I'm wearing. What do you shoes. think made the shoes smell? I know, <laughs> I know, but the feet themselves. If you put your nose to the sole of my foot, you're not no. Gonna but what smell do you anything. think made the shoes smell? The sweat from my feet, I agree, but yeah. like my feet aren't holding any sweat on their person. I don't believe you. Come, if I was in the studio, I'd have I've my smelled foot your feet in your before. face right now. I smelled your oh, feet before. Well, I get well. You we'll told see. me to. I wish I could send you a smell from here. Right I know now. they should be able to do that. I would send a little litmus test of my foot to you via via. Really I believe that they smell. I believe that they smell good now. I don't believe that you're on the same level of me is not having that that i was now. never claimed never to be claimed. on your same level never claimed i just said they don't really stay like I, I think i could take my sock off on a plane too and it, no one would know I believe unless you it. saw it right i do believe that i'm just saying if you go on a run i'm saying if i literally ran 15 miles my feet wouldn't smell we need to test this. Okay. I we really, for real, need to test this. I don't know what it is. I would love to. Let's do this. Let's test it. I want to put a okay. bookmark in. I want to put a pin in this, and I want to test okay. this foot smell theory because I, I want to believe you. I want to believe you so bad, but I really got to just see it in action. Yeah, uh, I'm, I have I'm to fully confident in my abilities. Okay. Yeah. So if, we'll, if, we'll circle if, back. If, if you, if not you, then who? Mm-hmm. So, I had a girl. I had actually a couple people I went to high school with that got there sweat glands removed from their armpits so that they wouldn't ever smell under their armpits. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, yeah, you could do that. Want to hear something weird about BO? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Maybe this is TMI, but it's like at this point, who gives? Yeah. Um, After I had COVID, my BO started smelling completely different and I don't know if it's my BO that changed or my smell. Oh, I can't smell. answer that. But isn't that interesting? That is interesting. I feel like And that's really the only thing that's changed. In your Facebook group that talks all about your results of having COVID, has anyone mm-hmm. talked about their BO? Maybe type that in on them if you haven't visited and the, in a oh, while. I forgot about the long COVID group. Yeah. No, I don't know. But it's interesting because I did lose my taste and smell. I did not, which is crazy. I think I did for like 20 minutes. And- well, you didn't have like the first wave of COVID. I feel like that's the one where people really lost their taste and smell. No, I guess you're right. That's when I got mono. And looking right. back, I'm like, was it mono or was it COVID? But I, I don't know. But yeah. yeah. Um, no, that's true. I didn't get it that first time. Not until the end of 2020. I was like one of the last people that got it. You really oh, were. My, I thought I wasn't going to get it. I know. That's crazy. That oh, tragic. by the way. This is the four year up, like, like almost to the day mark of of COVID. That's freaking really, yeah, really sweeping the globe. Oh my god, to the day! Is it March twenty fifth? It is. Oh my god, yeah, no, it is. Today was today. No, you know what I, else? What's happened on March twenty fifth? You know what March twenty fifth is, don't you? No. A very sad day for a lot of people. You don't know? No, I don't. Zane had left One Direction. Oh, I did know that nine nine years ago today. I didn't Mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So a lot of people are in mourning today. A lot of people are in mourning today. Mm -hmm. Myself included. Yeah. Mm, I'm sorry. It's all right. 
But look at how much we got from, oh, not Zane, from all of them, kind of, except some. We got a lot of Harry because of. We sure did. We sure did get a lot of Harry and some because of that too. So that fateful day actually yeah. led us. One Two door closes. Yeah. And another one opens for a buttload. It's like so, and I've been dealing with this a lot recently. So hard to find out that like people who you like thought were best friends hate each other. There's just yeah. like nothing worse. That would be like if someone, like if we like hated each other. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. It's just like. Uh, I get it. I'm trying to, I feel like I just had this happen with somebody and I was, I was like, oh, I don't even. Oof. I wish I didn't like know that. Josh? No. Great thing you brought up, though. Because I watched like four episodes of that docu-series today. Yeah, we need, a, we need to talk about it. We can put that in the TV part. Okay, perfect. Of today. Can I have a lot to talk about? Okay, pick one thing and, and start talking. I re- well, I really quickly want to circle back to like the, the, the manners of like taking your, the protocol of taking your shoes off on a plane. Okay. I had something happen to me last week. I posted on my Instagram story and I was getting a lot of feedback and I didn't have time to really review it. So I'm going to talk about it here today. And I really okay. feel like we're, we're not going to be in the same page place here. I was sitting in a restaurant. I was by myself. And this woman sitting next to me, right next to me, very close to me, keeps blowing her nose like six or seven times. I wasn't even there for that long. Mm-hmm. Every 10 seconds, like big wet blows. <laughs> And I, 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 it was like, I was like, oh. and if that's not enough for you, you know, it was into a cloth napkin that the, she then at the end of her meal just put on the table. And it's not like people, your servers aren't wearing hazmat gear. You know, you shouldn't do that, I think. And so my rule of thumb, I came up with the sitting there is you get twice, take twice. You can blow your nose twice on a, at a restaurant sitting at the table. It, that's kind of seems to me like a situation where it's not hard to get up and go to the bath. Like that's that's another thing where you're it's it's a, it's involving a lot of people very close to you and eating. Particles. Oh, Connor, I couldn't agree more. I think okay, you're not good. being strict thank, enough. Thank God. And then the cloth I think napkin. it should be twice, but only if it's dry and not in the cloth napkin. Oh my God! Wow, I did not expect us to be on the same page here. I was I, over explaining myself. Hundred percent agree. If it's wet, stay home. If it's wet, stay home. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great rule of thumb. But if you really need to go be be at a be at lunch, which I totally understand, I need to I need to be at lunch, you know, mm-hmm. at a restaurant at lunch. Just get up, mm-hmm. get up and go to the bathroom, or head over to Cafe Zyrtec. You know, don't eat at a, at a at a brunch spot. I was having oatmeal. Do you think I want to hear that? Right, oatmeal is a horrible thing to be eating and listening to someone blow their nose. It's like a bowl of boogers. I hadn't had oatmeal in a long time. And I was at a spot that I could tell it makes a mean bowl of oatmeal. And I did, I was not, I was not disappointed until the Mucinex monster sat down next to me. It was crazy. It was crazy. I almost said something. I didn't almost say something. I'm sorry, Connor. It's okay. I'm just shocked that we're on the same page there. I was expecting like a kind of a long back and forth. No, I think it's honestly like crazy that people do it. The cloth napkin thing blows my nose because it's like, who do you, it's like out of sight, out of mind, you know, for them. There's something inherently wrong if you about were blowing your-, your nose into a cloth napkin at a restaurant surrounded by patrons and waiters who will have to handle the cloth napkin. If you were at your home, would you blow your freaking load into a cloth napkin no well i never understood handkerchiefs ever in the first place oh oh my like God. why do you have a piece of fabric to hawk loogies into and and blow your nose into Ew. and then Ew. putting it Ew. back oh you're right and I offering forgot. it to others oh my gosh i'm, I'm getting actually ptsd this is a gross episode this is a gross episode my grandma mimi actually like has tissues in all her sleeves, all of her long sleeve, and she'll use it and then put it back in her sleeve. Yay. So I'm airing out all of my family's dirty laundry today. Mm-hmm. Literally. 
Um, okay, well, that's what I had. I also just want to circle back to last week really quick because I had like a celebrity filled one night, actually, two days last two Oh, days. yeah. You need to fill us in. So I think right after we finished our episode, I went and got ready because I, I was going to the Roadhouse movie mm-hmm. with Jake Gyllenhaal. And there was a lot of our friends there too. It was really fun. Um, and I had seen him like the day before. I think I had seen him that day whenever we got on the phone, right? On the horn. You I'd saw Jake Gyllenhaal? Yeah, getting into his car, like leaving because I, I had a meeting at his hotel. Oh, I think I missed that part. And I, w- well, I was in the cafe and I, and I saw him walk. I saw who I thought was him, but I was like, why is he so? Jake John Hall's in buff. I forgot about the movie he's in. Mm-hmm. That where he had to get buff. He is huge. Oh, he like kept his, the buffness? Usually they let it go. He maintained the buffness. Yeah, no, it was remarkable. And um, he gets in his car and leaves. But, and then I saw him at the movie. I was like, he's like the head of the, this movie. Um, we didn't, he, we didn't meet him, but we met all the rest of the cast almost. And it was a great movie. Met all the rest of the cast. I met Keenan Thompson, who was so nice. That's awesome. I did lie to Keenan Thompson and sure. say that I, I read his biography and it was amazing. Yeah. And now it's time for our good neighbor custom segment, which is brought to you by State Farm. When you get a new car or a new home, the first thing you might find yourself saying is, OMG. Or, I can't believe it. Or, how is this my life? But what you really want to say is the one thing that can get you the help you need. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm is there with the coverage you need for your car, your home, or even boats, motorcycles, RVs, and other things that matter to you. Um, I've been having a hard time the past week or so with how much travel I've been doing. It's, it's you know, to the airport, home from the airport, check into the hotel, leave something valuable at the hotel, have to call them, leave my phone in a new, like a car. Like I, it's a lot. It's a, it's a struggle. And even though the struggle was real this week, I am nominating the guy who drove me home in his car on Friday night from the reception I was at. And I'll get into that story later. Who returned my phone to me on Sunday? Uh, Cause he saved me a, a bunch of money. So obviously we all know that adulthood comes with these types of low key struggles. What to cook for dinner, how to exercise more, ways to eat healthier. That one's on weighing heavy on me, especially this week. And the list goes on, but luckily one of the parts of adulthood that doesn't have to be as complicated is insurance, thanks to State Farm. With a State Farm agent, you know someone is there to help you choose the coverage you need. With so many coverage options, it feels good knowing you can find what works best for you and your needs. And when you need ways to get help, State Farm gives you options there too. Whether it's in person or on the phone with your local agent or on statefarm.com or also on their award-winning app, State Farm lets you do things your way. State Farm is the good neighbor we all want and deserve. So when you need help protecting the things that matter most, remember to say, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Um, I have not. I haven't gotten to it. But I'm sure it's... I haven't amazing. gotten to like, it. I haven't gotten, gotten to it. it. Um, and then I met Jaime from Broad City. The guy who plays Jaime from Broad City, Arturo. He was there. He was so freaking nice. He's like, we look alike. And then we we have a little, we took a oh little. Oh my God, moment. yeah. Kinda. Twins. Kinda we do. You're in, it's like the Bruno Mars family. Yeah. I, that's, that's like that's the genre same. of look alike. Yeah. F- phenotype. Phenotype. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then. It's like uh, the Bruno Mars phenotype of it all. Yes. <laughs> yes. In the Were we, kingdom. was it this podcast where I discovered Bruno Mars' real name? No. What is it? Oh, it was obsessed. Oh, this is freakish, Connor. This would stick with me. I Gird your loins and, and buckle up. They're girded and buckled. Peter Jean Hernandez. Take all the time you need. Mm-hmm. I hadn't really like is changing his entire discography for him that his mm-hmm. name is Peter. My dad's name is Peter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That man is not a Peter. 
That's not. And I guess he knew that. He knew that too. Oh, is he? He had the foresight. No. No, 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 no. I'd love to know why he chose Bruno Mars. Uptown Funk is not written by someone named Peter. It is written by Peter Hernandez. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. No. Why was I talking about Bruno I, Mars on Obsessed? I think you were talking about a cover on Glee. And... That, that that's literally the only way it would ever come up so that makes sense <laughs> well i am a huge bruno mars fan i don't know if yeah. i've talked about it on here but i i think he's one of he's like the next michael jackson to me to me i think he's a great performer i think i i don't know much about his character but i assume he's fun to hang out with um and i really think we are about to be in a bruno mars renaissance and i, I can't wait personally that's a guy that makes hits I, what when was his last hit? Um, I I don't know. I know that he's like touring around with Anderson Pack, mm-hmm. doing the DJ thing. Did you just hear? I just think I swear I just heard a monkey. I didn't hear that. I something evil is it? Maybe foot. it was Frankie. Is she chirping? I can't hear anything with my AirPods in. I'm deaf with my AirPods in. Really? Like I I almost get hit by cars. Every five oh, seconds, if I'm walking with my AirPods in, and bikers from behind me too. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um. Oh, and then I met Conor McGregor, who was also just like the nicest person I've ever met. You know my opening line to Conor McGregor? Hmm. My name hey. is Conor too. I mean, How? what else could you say? Brooke, I go. I'm also Conor, and he was like, "Yeah." Literally, like. Make a witch kid vibes. I was like, I'm also Connor. And no, was, he needed I, to know. He needed to know that. I was like, but I have two ends and you have one. And he was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, he was so, so nice. And like, we get to walk up to Connor McGregor. I guess he had security, but like, he's brought the, the most dangerous man in the room. He didn't need security. He's a huge fighter. Right. Um, and then I knew me, that. Yeah. He let, they let me just like walk right up to him. Um, anyways, that was really cool. And then the next day to a shock to most, including like some of my friends, my parents, I was on, um, watch what happens live with Andy Cohen. I don't think I talked yeah, about it. On talk, here. Walk us through that. Um, it was an opportunity that knocked very like kind of last minute. Um, and I was, I was the bartender, obviously. And what does it mean to be the bartender? So to be the bartender, you're kind of you're just like a young man um, who is standing behind the bar. And you get. And like is it couple, usually like a familiar face? Yeah. Yeah. And you get like a couple moments on the, sh- on the show. Um, I don't know wh- what the origin story of the, the bartenders wh- were, but like, like Lucas Cage has been a bartender. I feel like it's a good omen and it's like a really good opportunity. It was cool. And. I was on it. I know I didn't know who was going to be on it until last minute or two. Um, and Andy came up to me and was the nicest person I've ever met. Like He's genuine. Like I, you know, when you can tell someone asks you a question and then like, it, it's not just to like, he genuinely asked you to ask you the question. He it was like, Oh, like follow up question. Like, Oh really? Like, well, like, like it was so nice. He came up to me a couple of times. Talked to me. He promoted Brooke and Connor make a podcast on Watch what happens live. No, he said every Thursday, um, Brooke and Connor make a podcast. Oh, and he t- made some jokes. It was fun. It was so good. He's so good. Um, and then is so there that a was way cool. we can watch it? Yeah, I think it's I think it's on YouTube, but it was it was on uh, Bravo. So I think Bravo might post it. It was a great episode. Um, there was Josh Lucas from Sweet Home Alabama and uh, okay. and Palm Ro- Palm Ro- Palm Royale, right? Now, the new show with Kristen Wiig was one of the guests. And then there was like a very famous chef that I'm spacing on his name, but he was, he stole the show. It was so funny. Um, and that was it. That was a blast. I was stoked. That was an unbelievable experience. Wow. Connor, kiss your brain. You're doing so many cool things. That was really cool. That was like one of my, even though like, I guess I kind of didn't do anything. Now that I'm like, right. Yeah, you did. I mean, just being there is crazy. It was cool. It was cool to be there. That's like being you know, asked to be, to be the bartender. Yeah. 
It was Not crazy. Not because everyone gets to be the bartender. But that was really cool. And then I went to Austin and I ordained the wedding, which was an experience too. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I got like, this is this is the one week without any comedy shows, but I didn't realize that like, I was going to have to write like kind of a low key set for this, mm -hmm. ordaining this wedding. I was wondering if you were going to go like comedy or like more serious. It was, a, it was a almost even split. Perfect. And a lot of people DM'd me after the Close Friends episode last week when I talked about it and they were like, here's a template. You just swap out the personal story part or like stories with them. And it, and it eventually ended up being completely mine. After I like looked at everybody's, I got the vibe of what the speech looks like. I was just worried about like, is this too long? Is this too, it felt short. And also this sucks. Right when I went out there, I was supposed to get mic'd up, but like the guy with the mic to put, the mic in my shirt like never showed up and obviously i didn't memorize the speech so i've got my little book there's no podium <laughs> and the mic they gave me was like a handheld mic so i'm reading this book oh god i'm holding a mic and then i'm grabbing the notebook with the other hand turning the page and like halfway through the wedding planner ran up like so angry and like put the mic stand in front of me and i was like Hey, lady, I'm a comedian. I was so used to holding the mic at my shows. I didn't even think, oh, use the stand, use the mic stand. I took the mic off the stand. So like in between when I turned the page, everybody heard. Like that's the sound. Right. Of the page. Um, well, comedy in itself. It was funny. But all the dead air when I was turning the page, I'm like, geez, I'm like, a, I'm like a carpal tunnel. Can, you, here. can you guys cut this? <laughs> I was being broke. I was being like. All the time, I was like, oh, I'm going to get tennis elbow from turning. I was like, Sh shut up. Shut up. Oh, you were annoying up. yourself. I was annoying myself. Everybody was like, that was awesome. That was like really heartfelt. Um, but I, I, in my head, I was like, oh, my God. And I almost started crying like right away, right when I got up there. Mm -hmm. So then I was embarrassed. I was, no, I, I was like, get a damn grip, bro. Get through this because the minister can cry at the end, maybe a little bit. Like, huh, you two are some of my best friends, but I started with crying. <laughs> so, oh, that's sweet, oh, Connor. Oh, my gosh. I've been fragile this week. I've been really fragile. But it was great. The wedding was the most fun ever. I posted 25 times on my Instagram story. We were just, like, having so much fun. It was just such a such a fun wedding. Oh, that's great. I, didn't, I did leave my phone in an Uber. Right. Um, Like, and I, it was one of those things. I, I think I told you about it the other day. Like, I have done this before where you get out of the Uber and you're by yourself and immediately you're like, my phone is in that car. And I'm like, let me I, just I, call. Let me just call, but it's not, let me just call. It was like, okay, now I don't have a phone. Right. That I was the irony of that. I, I can't contact him. And then like when I went to log into Uber on other people's phones, it's like, let me send you two factor authentication to your other device. I don't have that device. Right. I don't have that device. How did you get around that? The, the next morning, I had to go to the Apple store at the mall. The day of the wedding, I had to go to the Apple store at the mall. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, cool. We just need uh, your, other, your, your phone, your other phone. I am at the Apple store because I don't have a phone, actually. It was like everything needed the phone. I'm like, what, what do people do when they lose their phone? They gave me a Nokia like brick phone. I had to call 1-800-T-Mobile. And they said, you got to be an authorized user. So I had to call my dad. My dad had to make me an authorized user on a T-Mobile account. Then I had to call T-Mobile back. They put me on like an hour and a half hold. I don't have a phone. I'm literally just like sitting around with my dick in my hand for like two hours in the Apple store and just like looking around. I don't look around at stuff anymore. Like we don't have to do that. We have phones. I don't want to look around at stuff. And I'm just sitting there like I, I tried the new VR set. It was cool. Um, I like played with photo booth. For a while, it's always fun. Did computers. you leave any photos of yourself there on on every computer? That's good. Yeah, I said it as the screensaver for a bunch too. Yeah, you had to. Uh, but finally, I got in, and then and then I contacted the Uber driver, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I have your phone. Um, I hear I'm at this address," and I was like, well, "I can't get it today. I got to get it after the wedding." Hey guys, we're gonna take a short break to thank one of our sponsors, Allo Moves. A holistic approach to wellness is essential to daily life now more than ever, and that's why I love Allo Moves. They're my go-to for all things wellness and self-care, so I can keep my personal wellness routine on track. From beginner to advanced, Allo Moves has a flow or class that will fit your schedule. Their classes range from five minutes to an hour, depending on what you're feeling that day. 
trying to get in a good sweat? Then you've got to try their award-winning workouts like sweat-inducing yoga flows, hit classes, or reformer Pilates workouts with or without weights. Or find stress relief with meditations, affirmations, face yoga, gua sha, dry brushing, and journaling for those quiet moments. When it comes to sleep, it's just as important as fitness and nutrition. Ever since I watched The Art of Sleep on Alamoves, I've been falling asleep faster and staying asleep longer. I've been loving the 10-minute guided sound bath meditations. They've been super helpful in allowing me to de-stress even just for 10 minutes. Unlock your personal wellness routine with Aloe Moves. Go to alomoves.com now and use code BNC for an exclusive 30-day free trial and enjoy 20% off an annual membership. That's alomoves.com, code BNC, alomoves.com, code BNC. Then I got it on yesterday. I drove out to like pretty a place I've never been in Austin. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was in the back room of a gas station office and was not even the guy that was on my Uber profile. (laughs) I'm like, I don't know like what the deal was here. Here is $25 crisp cash. Don't spend it all at once. And I picked up my phone and I headed out. And now um, I'm going to, so at the Apple store, I had to buy a new phone. So now I got this new phone. And I'm going to go return it. Oh, so you did get a new phone. I had to get a new phone to transfer my info over so I could log back into all of my accounts so that I could access my my Uber account. You had to get a new phone just to sign in your Uber account? I had to get a new phone to get my old phone back. I took the boat to work. to be a better way. Yeah. Like, I know that it's dangerous not to set up two-factor authentication, but I'm bad. Fuck it. I'm never doing it again. I hate no, that. It was insane. so, so, so horrible. And like, there's, I have my ID. I have my ID on me. Can you just check my ID and see that I am me? How can I be more me than my ID? I just need to log into my stuff. So I'm, I don't like, I, I just cannot let that ever happen again. I don't think that I'm strong enough I to guess take it's a little comforting. Knowing that what. it's hard to break into our stuff. That's true. No, it is. And like, I am going to do it again, but. Sheesh, Louise. I like that was such a well. The reason I had to go get a new phone, Brooke. Sorry, I should have explained this. Is that my wedding speech was on my phone in my iCloud mm-hmm. thing? And to log into your iCloud, you need to be able to log into your Gmail as your backup email. To log into your, your Gmail, you need to log into your other backup email. They need to send the code to your phone. I couldn't access any any additional thing that I needed to do. Needed some other thing that needed an additional thing to do. Surely your computer could have helped. Did you not it have didn't. it? No, I don't have it. Horrible. Yeah, I left it at my house. So here we are. I have my new phone, and I have my old phone. And, and your old that, phone. My new phone is getting returned because you know what? I have Apple Care too. For the first time in my life, I went to the Apple Store with Apple Care, and they said, um, "We just need to log you to your iCloud account to use your Apple Care." And I, like, I am going to kill myself in front of you. This is horrible. I we like have to move on. It's stressing me out so bad. Oh, sorry. I'm done. I'm no, done. that's okay. That's a, an insane story. You have the highest tolerance for stress. No, yes, you do. I was, I was about to cry. I was like, Please I wouldn't have be- gotten. I wouldn't have. I would have had no phone. I would have kept the Nokia. Well, no, no, no. It was about the wedding speech that was on that phone. I couldn't. I I didn't I have it memorized. Rewritten it. I would have rewritten it rather than gone through any of that. Oh, I I don't know why. Right, what, right, what, right. Hmm. Writing the wedding speech was harder than anything, anything I've ever. I think because the pressure of like, it's their one day, yeah. and their parents are there, and their family's there. My parents were there. I was like, it's got to be good. It was, it was fun. But anyways, how was, how was, how, how have you been since the last time I <laughs> saw you? I feel like I could go on and on. Um, and on. I've really, Connor, nothing doing whatsoever. Nothing. I don't like. I can't think of one thing that I've done besides sit and be on my phone. It's, I love that. It's though. sick. It's sickening. Sometimes and I when I'm like, do something else, I told you my addiction to my phone is so bad. It's like I'm actively thinking in my head, like, stand up, open the window, can't. And yeah, if I do no. end up standing up and opening the window, I'm looking at my phone. I was There's having- nothing on my phone. I can't stress that enough. No one's texting me. No one's calling me. I've already done the wordle. I've already done the connections. I've already done strands. Okay. I've done it all. 
there's nothing there for me. Can't. Look. I need. I, it's like I need the UV frequency of the light rays soaking into my eyes, or I'll die. I know. When I look at my parents while I'm at home, I'm like, "Whoa, I've been in the same spot, and they've like been like mo- doing stuff." I'm like, "What are you guys doing? <laughs> Why are you on your phone?" It's it's mind blowing. I don't like. It's a we broke. We need to. I mean, it's like on a serious, on on like a very serious note. It's it's kind it's getting bad. Like this is like a medical addiction. No, I'm telling you, I've been trying to convey like how bad it is. It feels it feels very medical. It feels chemical. I'm in the same boat. I was downstairs. My my dad's talking to me, and when I'm looking at him, I'm like, oh my gosh, when is this sentence going to end? I need to get on it. Like look at Instagram. I'll literally like be with my friends, and they'll be talking to me, and I'm like thinking in my head, someone's talking to you. Look them in the eye and get off your phone. And I can't. I can't either. Bro. I was actually, that was kind of something that was crazy about me losing my phone this week. And it was like, oh my God. Yes. Finally, like all of those unopened texts are going to be out of my, I felt like broke the shackles of my phone. Oh my but God. Was, there you go through genuine withdrawals. I was like, no, but I need it back. No, I'll shake. I'll literally shake. I bite the inside of my lip. Mm-hmm. I think my goal, because I'm going to Florida mm-hmm. tomorrow, and so I'll be uh, um, be playing backgammon with Papa up a lot. My goal is going to be to put my phone on the other side of the room during backgammon. That is so. That is a really, really sensational goal that you've just said, and I'm Thank I'm gonna you. do I'm gonna do the same when I go play pickleball. After yeah, this. phone. Leave it in the car. Leave it at home. Leave it at home. I've been doing that. So when I wake up in the morning, I when I go downstairs, I I do not take my phone downstairs. The only issue is that like people actually, I I, I owe people responses on like work stuff. So and then I'm like, no, but I'm disconnecting. He's like, you really like there's some stuff you need to connect. You need to respond to those emails. Mm-hmm. You know. So it's like it's so weird. Like when I'm like so down to disconnect, it's when I owe people right signatures and stuff like that. And it's like, no, actually, no, I'm actually disconnecting right now so surely you understand here's the thing connor yeah sometimes i want to go on a walk to clear my head with and completely unplug but i need my music you need your music Bring you- back ipods so i can listen to my music without the temptation of social media and what have you you know where you know where you know how sick in the head i am i always think well what if i see something that is like a great piece of content and like it could change my career It'd be it'd be irresponsible for me not to take my phone on this walk. What possibly could change your life on your walk? If I I, like I saw if I saw somebody or like one time I was halfway through my walk and I heard some sea lions and I was like, what if there's a sea lion like out Bring doing a digital something? camera? No, we need Brooke. We need an iPod Touch. Like that would solve a lot of stuff. No, but I'll figure out how to. I, jailbreak it you'll jailbreak it i'll jailbreak it and also it's the just scrolling on the i on my phone that gives me the serotonin or whatever dopamine or whatever so i'd be able to just scroll back and forth on the ipod touch i need a nano i need this is this is this is two people talking about feature needing to go to rehab by the way this is like literally what we're saying no we need to go to the wilderness we need to go to the wilderness and be able to fend for ourselves fully be able to we need to fish for our food and oh yeah scavenge for berries and build that actually sounds sounds really awesome would need to make no a tiktok technology. would no, need to can't. make a tiktok would need brooke if you're if you're fishing you're i'm gonna with- have to i'm gonna have to post <laughs> it on my instagram sorry like that's hilarious i would no, have you're to. gonna have to just take it in with your eyes that would be take a mental picture of me fishing if it means it that much ir- to you it would be irresponsible. Hey, do a sketch. Do a sketch of me fishing. Brooke, I'm not going to do a sketch of you. I'm Oil painting. You. <laughs> oh, I could bring, I guess, I could bring a digital camera, literally. That's where it all no, began. We're not, we're not doing tech. No tech. We're not doing tech right now. No. Okay. I actually, I want to talk. New, what is this new face? Are you? Huh? You're doing a new impression. I'm not you're doing going, it. Okay. You're going, you're doing a weird voice and then you're going, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Like every now and then my body reinvents itself. It's like puberty. I've never seen you do this before. It's like personality puberty. It changes. Okay. <laughs> I have to talk about something really quick because I just realized. Right. Did you see all the paintings behind me? 
Very pretty. Painted them. Painted them you, in high school. That's a perfect, this is a perfect opportunity for you to get back into painting when we go into the wilderness. Oh my gosh, you're right. Wait, I want to show you this one of this of this girl on a deserted beach. This is you fishing for your food. Hang on. Let's see. Wow, you really did love like a good water landscape. Oh my God, that is, is she naked? Yeah, she is topless. I didn't realize <laughs> I painted a topless woman. She's, she's wearing a very tasteful lay. Yeah, um, and, I, and her hair is covering. Oh no, it's the lay. You made that? Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm looking at it now. You should get back into painting, Connor. That's really good. It's really good. Wow, you really like kind of. She is curvy. <laughs> uh, yeah. You really put some detail into that. I really did. <laughs> that is something that will be really eye opening for a lot of people on, on mm -hmm. YouTube when they see it. My my painting of a of Connor, a naked of woman a current, of a beautiful, gorgeous. A beautiful, gorgeous figure woman in nature, not a phone in sight, just having nope. a good time fishing for her food. Yeah. This is someone who's taking the boat to work and is really enjoying it. Yeah. Damn. Thank you for sharing. Happy to. Happy to. The rest are just kind of globs. Um, but You're re they're really good. I'm serious. You should start painting again. I would like to. I know. I, I, I want to on my patio. I was just about to say your patio would be the perfect place. Yeah, it would be really nice. Um, uh, so, okay, wait, I was going to say this really quick. I'm at home and with like with my parents and I had like a next level frustrating experience today, re-signing them into all of their streaming services. Oh my God. I can't even imagine. You need a drink. What's our password for Hulu? Why? Why would I know your password for Hulu? We went through all of the passwords for Hulu. Oh, you know what? I was thinking of HBO Max. They don't have Hulu. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm actually I'm gonna go upstairs for a little bit. I need to go upstairs. You don't want to get you don't want to get mad you about it. You don't want to get mad, but it's so dealing with people of a different generation and technology is truly nothing worse truly there's not i mean it was it was mind-blowing that experience it was like i took like two full hours and it felt like oh like imagine imagine being a member of the geek squad and having to roll up to houses all day and all day you are like met with the like the patience of an insane asylum that level of signing them into their oh what's my password do you write it down anywhere do you remember where you wrote it down because then I can help you, but I can't, I cannot, the Geek Squad members. They shouldn't have to pay taxes. No, they should really, you know, they should, we, we should do something for the, the members of the Geek Squad. We should squad. have a day. For the Geek Squad, for the Geek Squad. For Let's the reclaim search. March 25th. Let's reclaim March 25th. The day of, for Geek Squad the Appreciation Day. Geek Squad Appreciation Day. Geek Squad Service Members Day. I think they should get to eat free somewhere. What's mm -hmm. a good place for them to get? IHOP. IHOP. I think they should get a free stack. All Geek Squad members get yep. a free stack. I'm going to take them. Let's take a Our moment. Yeah. Let's take a moment to think of those the members of the Geek Squad and their service and how many fallen Geek Squad members we've had in, in years to come. Thank you, Geek Squad. Thank you. It's beautiful. I'm glad. Oh. I love when we take moments to honor. I think that there's a Those lot of like, serve us. really special people that put a lot like you, you would have to, you would genuinely have to be like a level of a patient. Like they're, they're kind of teachers in a way because they do have to show up somewhere, troubleshoot, oh, walk people through things. That's, that's, that is someone that I really, really, there's something for, there's a lid for every pot. Mm -hmm. I could not do that job. I don't have it in me. No, it's, me neither. That seems really, really, really challenging. And I have, I have no patience in general for anything, but that I can't even imagine. Like whenever I'm FaceTiming with my mom and she'll like close out of the FaceTime and not be able to figure out how to get back in. I'm doing deep, I'm deep breathing until she comes back. Or when you, yeah. When, when they call you and you call them 
right back and then it goes to voicemail and then you call again and it rings and just goes to voicemail. Did you, as soon as we hung up, chunk your phone and like across the room? I know that you're holding it still. It's like they go, oh, they're gone. And then they just move on with their day. Just there's nothing. What's scary is that it'll be us one day. Um, can't and then that people bad. are going to lose patience with us. And that's what's scary. I do wonder, like with technology and stuff, like now they're putting the neural links in people's brains. And I'm like, no, I would never do that. Like, I wonder if there's a generation of people that are going to be like, we're gen, we're gen alpha. Of course we microchipped our brains. You know, like that's going to be. There will be. I know. And I'm not going to do that. I don't see that in my right. future at all. Right. So we'll be the ones that are old. In that I'm way. really like sick to my stomach that I even said, well, no, I'm not. like that, that template of stuff. I think we mm-hmm. talked about, right? I, it's still happening. I don't that's know how the wor- still- that is the worst trend that's ever been born. You don't even have to say the words. Like that's how it comes. That's how it, it, that's what I hear. And you know what? There hasn't even been one funny parody of it either. Like it's that bad that you can't even parody it because the parodies are annoying. No, the parodies that are like, we're we're a mom and daughter and we hang out. Of course, we borrow each other's clothes. The next one was like, we're a mom, the mom, we're a mom and daughter. Of you need to move out. And it's like, no, mom, you're supposed to say something nice. Shut up. That one, like, like those ones are like, oh no, you're like, supposed to say something nice. Almost worse than the originals, if I may. I know because it's like they're actually putting in effort to be. Parot, 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 What do you mm-hmm. call it? Like in the past tense, the parodic. What? Parod- oh, parodying. Yeah. Is that it? Parodying. Yeah, I guess. Um. You know what I'm thinking about? We said something in an ad that is, I have not been able to stop thinking about. What? We said something about like walking in flip flops or something. And one of the ads. Do you remember those like squishy flip flops? Yeah, that could float. Yeah, squishy, floaty flip flops. Hold on. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking you about. You know exactly like what you're about. They're like shiny, and you want to take a bite out of them. Flo- Floaties. You remember these? Yup. I have been I having do. ever since we talked about the flip flops in that ad. I can't stop thinking about putting these on after getting out of the pool because for whatever reason they were always like the swimming shoes, and then like walking back to the bunk at camp with these shoes on and having that the sound the sound and also you can't walk straight you're slipping and sliding everywhere and having to walk up the hill in the floaties oh my god oh my god oh my god so that's been a sensation that's been sticking with me for the last 45 minutes as i just keep thinking about me in those floaties bring them back yeah. i want to take a those those are something that i want to chew on you know when people are like remember those pool noodles and they always had a bite taken out of them mm-hmm. right now in this moment i'm gonna admit that was me like if you saw <laughs> a pool Connor, floaty, you did not even have to tell us that if you saw a pool floaty with a big chunk <laughs> out of it i that was me i came to your pool and i did that every across the nation i came out and i chewed on it for hours the way that i'm not scared of microplastics in my body at all because i was intentionally eat, chewing and swallowing them you I'm cannot not of microplastics i'm scared of what else is on them like, what do you mean? Just like from ha- kids handling them and oh, the, being pool in the, the pee water and such. I just like don't feel like eating a pool noodle. Microplastics aside. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. the good kind of bacteria. Yeah, I guess DSDF, of course. But I was oh, never yeah. scared of things in a pool because chlorine is like killing everything. I feel like. Well, you think that and then you work at a pool and a kid poops oh. in the pool. And the chlorine doesn't kill it. Like the length like that you have, you have to, to go through, you have to shock the pool. Yeah. Okay. Scary. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a different, yeah, that's a different way to look at it. I guess, yeah, I hadn't considered. So who's to say that there hasn't been poop that someone didn't clock? Speaking of, um, we, as a college, all my college friends were at this thing this weekend, at this wedding, and we were talking because there was an event that we had at my college house at some point. It was a small, it was like a pregame or something. We had a lot of, we had a couple of people there. Some were our close friends, some weren't. At some point I went into the bathroom and I smelled something and there was a turd on the ground. <laughs> and I came out, I got my other room and I was like, no way, right? No way. 
And he goes, no, that's a, you know, that's a turd. That's a human turd. We didn't have a dog. It was a human turd. And we had only had a handful of people at this pregame. And I had to get my other roommates to like, go pick it up and put it, you know, flush it, flush the turd. And we, this weekend, pieced together who it was. And I, like, obviously I'm not going to say it, but it was groundbreaking. It was a groundbreaking discovery. And the person it was, I never, ever, Never in a million ever, years? No, 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 no. A million guesses. I never would have guessed that she left the turd. She, her, hers? She, her, hers. Oh, my gosh. It was crazy. Crazy. Gee, was and, there a reason for it? Was it on purpose? No, this girl who did this like is the most proper, like buttoned up, well dressed mom of the friend group. So happy, overjoyed all the time. Does not poop. Like if if there was ever a girl that did not poop, it was this girl. And, and yet she poops on the floor, no less. <laughs> So my thought is that she snuck in during the pregame. It's not a party, so there were not that many people there. And I think she was like, "Oh, I'm stinking this. I'm stinking up this joint. I need to go quick." And I think like she really didn't pinch all the way, and there was still a straggler in in there, and it I must have understand. dropped to you the floor. When she, when she, she must have like sh- she must have like shaken it out of her <laughs> her pants. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know her story because we. Ever- I, I didn't talk to her. I don't know the story, but I I was able to lock in a culprit, and that is bun. I couldn't be I couldn't be happier to know who it is. Like I was, no one was mad because no one. It How wasn't did you even an, crack the case. It wasn't an act of malice. It was definitely like an act of necessity. So I I wasn't ever mad. I was able to crack the case because she many years later mentioned it to someone that was at this wedding. Oh, I thought this happened at the wedding. No, no, no. This happened in college. I had forgotten about it. I'm sorry. I thought it happened this weekend. No, no, no. It was, I know it was in college, in my college house. That's what I was saying. And we were having a pregame. That's what, oh, sorry if I wasn't clear, but yeah. It's like something that, it's, it was something that like had happened and was so crazy that I actually had blocked it out of my memory because it was the bathroom right next to my room. (laughs) And when someone else brought it up, I was like, Oh my God, I forgot about that. Wow. Were you yeah. able, ever able to look at her the same? Well, I just learned that new information. So TBD. I'm so confused. You just learned it this weekend? Uh, we found out who it was this weekend. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I'm starting to put the pieces together. We didn't know who it was up and like no one knew except the person that she had told. And that person told us at breakfast on Sunday morning. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we had something similar to that in my high school. There was uh, the Shawcross Shitter. Um, we had a building at our school called Shawcross Hall, which was just like where the auditorium and cafeteria and stuff was. And so, um, every day at three o'clock, somebody would find a poop, um, <laughs> like on the toilet, not in it. So, like clockwork, the Shawcross Shitter would shit. <laughs> I love when you. I love when people name like, like a, a repeat criminal, the Shallcross Shitter. Okay, keep going. But no one knew who the Shallcross Shitter was. It was like Just it was like every go- time. It was like A and Gossip Girl. It was literally A and Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars. Shitter. Until Connor, the seniors every year there's a senior meeting for worship where only the seniors get the opportunity to stand up and share, and the Shallcross Shitter. Stood up at meeting for worship, which, by the way, is supposed to be like a, oh, like if you're moved by the light of God, stand up. And he confessed to being the shell crush shitter. Well, he and was moved by the. He was moved to the light of he God. He was moved by the light. The and saw him at my birthday party in L.A. a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, the shell crush shitter! By the way, super like nor like super normal guy. Uh, it's always the ones you least expect. No, but I would, I maybe would have expected it from him because he's always, he's like a merry prankster of sorts. I don't know yeah. too well, but. I have to, I have to say one more shitting story. Yeah. Oh, please. Um, there was a guy not at my high school that would, this girl and this guy broke up and it was like one of his best friends. And so every party they would go to, this girl would drive to and he would poop on her windshield of her car. 
And it, I think it was like a six, seven time situation. That's just like, I wouldn't want to do that if someone to someone that I was romantically involved with. Like, I would never want them to see that. No, I, me. I, no, 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 this is, or I guess to anyone. This was the, <laughs> this is a friend of the people that were romantically involved. Oh my God. I don't know why I can't follow anything. I, I really feel like I'm not connecting the dots well. Um, yeah, but we, we should we mental. should wrap up on that. Okay, note. And damn. I do want to, I do want to say we need to get better at including the TV recaps because I want people to join us in our TV recaps as we talk about them. So join close friends, I think, because mm -hmm. I think we're gonna do a lot of TV talk. Yeah, I need to talk about the Nickelodeon doc. Yeah, our recapulations are coming up in close friends, but things we're watching right now. I'm personally watching Palm Royale, The Gentleman. And the Nickelodeon docu series. So, if you want to chime in, I post a lot on my Snapchat story. Perfect. Brooke, what are you? What are you watching? I only have watched the Nickelodeon documentary because I can't seem to get into television as a form of media recently. But I did love and and want to discuss. Wow, uh, the doc. I was about to go on a run today, and the Drake one came up. When he his episode came when up. When he sits down. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Let's talk. Let's talk about it in the bonus. I couldn't leave my house. Okay. We'll I know. About it. I know. Um, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. See, there it is again. Okay. All right. We'll see you in the bonus. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Why did he leave? <laughs> <laughs> Why did he do that? <laughs> oh. Uh, uh. That was so funny. <laughs> Did we have, was it still recording? Yep. 100%. Uh, that's so funny. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Close Friends. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. It was a nice place he picked, and then I had two drinks, and I was like kind of drunk for some reason, and I feel embarrassed, and I was like, but a lot of, lot of killing, kind of. I'm used to violence. With Dan Schneider, it's like... It's so sadistic. He is so, so disgusting. Sign up on TMGstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.